welcome to a special episode of Beyond the Trailer, and I am joined by Ben Lyons. That makes it special? Uh, really? Yes, I yes. I thought this was a special episode, Well, no? it's going to be super oh, special, because okay, cool. you're, you're one of the elements. Oh, nice. Made, yes. Many moving parts. On it's Beyond a special the stew. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. Happy, uh, happy movie time at the box office. I know. This is the most wonderful time of the year it for really us. It really is. It's such <laughs> a, a diverse slate of films this Christmas, don't you uh, think? I'm so excited. A little bit of everything, yeah, it's, I feel like. it's, it's, You know, it's an interesting time, because Oscar movies are always so predictable. Mm -hmm. And I feel that, we have, as you said, a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Well, you know, well, one of the things we've been doing here on Beyond the Trailer is we've been having an end-of-year poll where you guys have been voting for your top ten films of the year. Mm -hmm. And, Ben, I have to tell you, right now, the it's Avengers. Neck and neck in yeah, here. Avengers and Dark Knight Rises. Wow. Neck and neck. Both, both movies, obviously, inspired by the world of comics. Both mm -hmm. the sort of ten-pole movies for DC and Marvel, but very different movies. Oh, it's in crazy. Their tone. In, their, in the way they were shot and well, what they're trying to achieve. Which one are you voting for? I have to say The Avengers is my top film of the year. Really? 2012. Yeah, I'm putting together my top ten list, but The Avengers is at the top. Uh -huh. How about, how about you? Me, well, I think my favorite film of the year, when it comes down to The Dark Knight and Avengers, I have to disagree with you there, Grace. <gasps> I, I, I like The Dark Knight Rises a little more than The Avengers. That's awesome. All right, we have an old school showdown yes. going down. Okay, that's great. Okay, so are you of the, are you of the group that feels why isn't The Dark Knight Rises nominated for any awards? Because you know, of course, it was The Dark Knight was infamously shut out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when you look at The Dark Knight, the second of Christopher mm -hmm. Nolan's you know Batman trilogy. That movie, I think, got eight nominations, seven in the technical categories, yeah. but didn't get a Best Director nomination, or which best was picture. strange. Or with Best Picture, with 10. Right, which was with 10, yeah. very strange, mm -hmm. and, and you know, it had all types of technical, Wally Pfister, Best Cinematographer, yeah. all types of technical stuff. Obviously, Heath's performance that was nominated and won. No brainer. And so I think this year, with the, the hype and the hoopla surrounding The Dark Knight Rises, everyone was kind of expecting it to get over the hump, and it could really never live up to The Dark Knight, mm -hmm. because of because. Because of Heath's performance. That yeah. performance is so memorable, so iconic. And it was such a new idea, the way Christopher Nolan handled the film. Yeah, it handled the whole mm -hmm. franchise. Yeah. And, and then you have a film like The Dark Knight Rises, which features a, a really underutilized Tom Hardy. Everybody knows what yeah. a beast of an actor mm -hmm. he is, and he's literally muzzled in this. So <laughs> I, like I don't that. think he got a chance to really show his chops. But in terms of you know comparing it with The Avengers, I, I feel like... The Avengers what was was so much fun, but it was very lighthearted. I wasn't obviously like very emotionally moved by the Avengers. Yeah. I think what the heart of this is is I like what you said about the Avengers was too light because I've been having this discussion a lot with people on YouTube lately, mm -hmm. where I'm I've been saying, ah, oh, Man of Steel too dark, Star Trek too dark. Uh, okay, but I, I like the darkness in Dark Knight. Yeah. Do you feel? That, do you want to see that same darkness applied to other movies? That's interesting you say that, and it's a trend now in these big event movies. Yeah. I mean, Star Trek is literally called Into Darkness, yeah. and you're seeing it with Man of Steel. And, you know, The Avengers is a popcorn, big, comic, flashy uh, adventure movie, and mm -hmm. so it, it should be a little light. I think they got the tone of it right. That said, in terms of what I want as a more important movie-going experience or more something that's going to make me have me change the way I look at the world mm -hmm. a little bit, that's, that's sort of my qualifications when this time of year we're putting together top ten lists or saying if a film should be a Best Picture nomination. I like to like put films on my list that change the way I look at movie making and change oh. the way I look at the world. See, so, that's why Avengers is on my list. You change the way you look at the world well, now? <laughs> Really? <laughs> I look in the sky really carefully. <laughs> no, I feel it changed the way I feel about comic book movies because I felt for the first time when I walked out of the, um, the Avengers, I felt, wow, they, Hollywood finally captured what it's like to read a comic book. Yes, you know, this is definitely the closest thing to you know capturing that experience yeah. of actually holding the comic and in making your hand. it seem realistic. So often Hollywood has to cheap out and be like, well, we can't do that sequence. Yeah, you know, famously for Watchmen, they were like, well, we can't have a giant squid. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, Joss Whedon's like, I can. And then, like, like with the Ang Lee version of the Hulk, he was trying too hard to make it look like a comic oh, yeah, book with infamously. the odd framing yeah. and the pages <laughs> and those. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Like my buddy on on the Cinefix Network, Devin mm -hmm. Faraci, said that the Dark Knight Rises is a big wet fart. It's not. It's obviously a movie made <laughs> to entertain the entire world, and anytime you're making cinema that is a world experience, mm -hmm. you're playing to different cultural tastes in film. And I think, you know, once again, Christopher Nolan creates something that uh, allows the audience to, to kind of, you know, well, figure it out for themselves. And he trusts the audience to make certain conclusions about the characters, and he doesn't force feed them the, the popcorn well, moments in the movie. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because I feel like you know, the Avengers is the beginning, all right? Yeah. But The Dark Knight Rises is an end of a, of a franchise for all intents and purp uh, purposes. Yeah. And I felt like 
not enough stuff was answered. I feel like there were too many things where I was like, but wait, I want to see more of that. I want to see more Catwoman. I want to see, I love turning Wayne Manor into an orphanage. I thought that was so clever. Yeah. You know? I almost like at the end, uh, no, again, I'm sure that everybody watching this has seen <laughs> The Dark Knight Rises, yes. so we can speak candidly yes. about the ending. But I almost wish it just was a free a, a shot of Michael Caine in the cafe, mm -hmm. and it didn't go back to Bruce Wayne. Or maybe he sees something, and yeah, you don't know what you it is. You see his facial expression, and he kind of smirks, mm -hmm. and that leaves the ending opening. I guess Christopher Nolan didn't want to, I guess, be typecast as the guy who has those, you oh, know. Oh, with Inception, yeah. Yeah, those <laughs> endings that are kind of up in the air. But I thought it was a little, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, didn't, but, uh, I didn't really Also, care the that. other thing is, is that who wouldn't notice Bruce Wayne? You know, they'd be like, <laughs> oh, don't I, we know that guy over there? You know, I'm obviously excited to see more from the Avengers. Like you said, it's a beginning, mm -hmm. so I think it'll be interesting to see now how Iron Man 3 and the new Captain America fit into the lineage. Like, will they acknowledge the fact that there was an Avengers movie in that, or will yeah. they ignore that and kind of yeah. have those movies stand on their own? I think it's going to be a mix. It's going to be interesting. I think that to tie the movies together so inten intensely is exciting, but risky. It's very risky, because yeah. then you have <laughs> egregious errors, like leaving out Don Cheadle, who's at the golf course. He's yeah. not even in the movie. Where yeah. is Don? You know? I know. As everyone talks about Spider-Man, you know, the Marvel's so spread out over, you know, at least DC has their stuff locked down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be interesting. So while we wrap up here, I want to ask you something. You're bi-coastal. I guess. All right? Yeah. Yes, right? He, he works in L.A. Grew up in New, New York. York. Yeah. in L.A., yeah, yeah. So I think that something a lot of New Yorkers in L.A., uh, LA Los Angelinos like to talk about is where is it better to go to the movies? That's a great question, actually. You know, <laughs> some, I, I like some of the quirky um, movie theaters that still exist in Los Angeles. Yeah. I saw Les Mis at the Arrow in Santa oh, Monica. Wow. I love the Zigfield here in New York. It's probably it's my in, favorite it's in movie theater. It's business, I think. I heard that, yeah, which is I'm unfortunate. Scared. That's a great theater on mm -hmm. 54th Street yeah. in New York. Um, there's something special, though, about going to the movies in L.A. because that's where the movies get made. Yeah. You know, that's where... You have reserved seating. Yeah, reserved seating. If you, you get stuck about. in traffic, you can get your seat yeah. like, later. <laughs> I used to love going to the movie theaters at, like, the weird theaters in Times Square and stuff. Yeah. But now, like, there are no great movie houses here in New York like it's there used multiplex. to be. It's all multiplex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love the Egyptian theater. The, the man, the Grauman's Chinese Theater in Los Angeles is a yeah. great... That's where I saw Life of Pi this wow. year. And you have the El Capitan Disney. The Disney's El Capitan Disney yeah. with the organist, you wow. know. Wow. There's that old theater in, in uh, where uh, in Silver Lake where like Sunset in like kind of turns on Vermont. I like that movie theater. They're just old quirky kind of movie theaters that yeah. still exist in LA that I don't think they have here in New York as much. So I have to go to. That's because you guys need them for the premieres. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right? You're keeping them open. Real high class problems. We like need them for the premieres. You know. Well, that's I think that's what's keeping the Ziegfeld open. We we'll look forward to seeing your top ten. Thank you. Yeah, you can check it out on Screen Addict on the Cinefix Network uh, right here on the good old YouTube. Yeah. I'm loving the YouTube. Oh, great. It's a lot of Welcome. fun. Welcome. Yeah, it's cool. Nice to have you. So thank you for having me on Beyond the Trailer. Great. See you around. Bye, Bye guys.